Hey everyone, Brady from Texture Labs here, and today I want to run through a tutorial on creating this extruded weathered wood type look in Photoshop. It's a fairly easy setup and has some nice details. Think you might pick up a few cool tricks along the way. I'm going to show you an easy technique to get these natural looking rough edges. I'll walk through a method that I love to get these extruded sides with cast shadows without ever going into Photoshop's 3D workspace. And at the end, I'll show you an easy final compositing technique that you can use on almost any piece of design to give it a more photographic and cohesive look. That's all coming up. Let's get started. All right, I'm gonna get started with a new document and I'm working at 3840 by 2160 or 4K. Nice and high resolution, maybe a little overkill, but I like getting all that detail in there. And I'm gonna set the background color here to black and create. I'll press T for my type tool and I'm gonna set the color to just sort of a medium gray. The color here is not too important, but gray will be a nice neutral starting point. And this is a font called Cairo, I'll link to that below. Command return to exit my type tool and then I'm going to transform that using command T and scale it up, get it more or less centered. I'm holding option to scale symmetrically and there we go. Then the first thing I want to do is get some texture into the letters. I'm going to open up this Texture Labs Wood 134. I'll select all and copy and I'll close that one and paste it right on top here. Then to get the wood to live only inside of the letters, I'm going to hover in between the two layers and holding option, I'll click to create a clipping mask. Then I'm going to use transform to move the texture around and I want to rotate it 90 degrees. If I hold shift, it'll snap to regular increments, then scale it, get it into place and something like that looks about right. And next thing I want to do is roughen up the edges of the letters, but what I really want is just to subtract a few areas like the wood edges have just been torn away a little. To give me more room to manipulate the type, I'll first rasterize this type layer by right clicking and selecting rasterize type. That means it's no longer live type and I can mess with it or apply filters to it like any other layer. Then I'm going to roughen this edge using a mask. First, I'll make a selection of the shape of the letters by hovering over the layer thumbnail here and giving it a command click to make a selection in the shape of the layer. Then I'll click on the create mask icon. And now it might not be readily apparent why I created sort of a redundant mask in the same shape as the layer, but let me manipulate the mask a bit and I think you'll see what I'm going for. With the mask selected, I'm gonna go to filter and filter gallery. And then I'm gonna select the brush strokes section and sprayed strokes. I'll change the stroke direction to vertical, the stroke length, crank it all the way up to 20, and then spray radius at 15. And in filter gallery, you can actually apply more than one effect by clicking this little icon down here that looks like a new layer. And I'm gonna add one more effect. This time in the artistic section, I'll select cut out, and I'm gonna turn the number of levels all the way up to eight, the edge simplicity right in the middle at five and edge fidelity all the way up to three. Then okay. And if I zoom all the way in here, we can see what that did. Because a mask can't add anything to a layer, it's only gonna take the areas where that filter kind of pushed into the letters and create these little missing chunks here. I'm gonna go ahead and apply the layer mask and commit to these new edges for the layer by right clicking on the mask thumbnail and selecting apply layer mask. That seems like a good place to leave the face of the letters for now, and I'm gonna move on to creating the extruded edge. Now, this is definitely something you could do using Photoshop's 3D workspace, but I like to use that as kind of a last resort. A 3D environment can be a little bit rigid, and at least on my machine, it can be slow. And, you know, I think one of the main advantages of using Photoshop over a true 3D platform is that you aren't bound by the rules of physics. So if you want lighting to look a particular way, you don't have to manipulate a lighting rig, you just figure out how to Photoshop it. So let me show you how I will fake the 3D. First thing I'm gonna do is create a copy of my text layer, and I want the copy to be underneath the original layer, so before I click on it, I'm gonna hold Option, and holding Option, I'll click and drag it down like this to create a copy underneath. I'll rename that layer Sides, and then I'm gonna transform that with Command T. And I'm gonna scale this layer down a little bit to create the look of an extruded edge. So I'm holding Option to scale symmetrically and bringing it down just enough to create a suggestion of some dimension, which actually doesn't need to be too much, but something like that looks about right. 
So for the most part, that gave me the shape I want, but there are a few places where the illusion is kind of breaking down. I'm just gonna paint in those little missing areas using my brush tool, B for the brush tool, and then I'll right click and set the size to 12 and make sure the hardness is at 100%. And then I'm just gonna sample that gray color by holding option, which gives me a temporary little eyedropper to sample a color. I'll grab that gray, and then you can probably get a sense of what I'm trying to do here. I'm just finding these places where the corners are kind of falling apart, and I'm just gonna paint these missing pieces. Now, you probably don't even really need to do this, but I'm kind of a stickler for detail, so let me just zoom around here and paint in these bits. And to paint straight lines, which makes it a little quicker, I can just click on any point, and then shift click another point and it will create a line. All right, and something about like that looks good enough for me. Next, I wanna make a copy of the wood texture and put it into those extruded sides. I'm gonna use the same method to make a copy. I'll hold option and then drag a copy of this wood texture down. Then I'm gonna hover in between these two layers and option click to create a clipping mask. And then I'm just gonna transform the wood and I'll right click and select flip horizontal. And that'll just make the details of the wood in the extrusion differ a little bit from the wood on the face of the letters. All right, next is my favorite part of this technique and kind of the magic moment where we get some shadows in here. And if you're enjoying this tutorial so far, please do hit the like button and be sure to subscribe. Next week, we're gonna dig into a couple super versatile techniques for using grungy textures. Okay, what I wanna do is create some light and some shadows on those edges. So first, I'll go to my adjustment layers menu and create a levels adjustment layer. I'm gonna put that right on top of my wood texture here and option click between the two to also include it in the clipping mask. I'll set the midpoint to 0.44 and the output level, I'll bring it down to 180. And that's already looking like a more realistic extrusion, but it's all in shadow. And let me show you how I wanna get some light in here. The first thing I'll do is invert the mask of this adjustment layer. So Command I to invert the mask. Then I'm gonna hover over the thumbnail of my original text layer and Command click to make a selection in the shape of the faces of the letters. Then another Command I to invert and turn just that portion of the mask white. Command D to deselect, and then here's the trick. I'm gonna Command T to transform the mask, and I'm gonna hold Command, Option, and Shift all at the same time, and drag one of these corners inward and parallel to the bottom of the letters. And that's creating a perspective transform, and look at what that does. This is actually what we just did to the mask, but I think that really does create the appearance of these letters kind of casting shadows on themselves and on each other. And I'm gonna do one more thing to create a little extra dimension. I'm gonna to go to my adjustment layers and create a hue saturation adjustment layer, and I'll also include that in the clipping mask. And then I'm gonna set it to colorize, and I'll shift the hue over to give the edges a bit of a blue color tint. I'll set the hue to 225, and maybe bring the lightness down a bit to negative 30. Then I'm gonna bring the overall opacity of this adjustment layer back to about 50%. And that just gives the sense that there's a slightly different colored light kind of coming from behind. And finally, I'm gonna revisit my text layer here and just give it one effect to give the faces a little more character. I'll select the layer and go into Effects, Inner Shadow. Then I'll reset that to defaults and turn the blend mode to Linear Burn. I'll bring the distance to zero and then bring the size up to 40 and then take the opacity back to about 20. And that's a subtle effect, but I think worth the effort just to get a little character on the faces there. And that is basically the whole technique to build this look, but let's run through just one final trick to help glue the whole image together. I'll go to the very top layer of my document and press Command Option Shift E. This creates a flattened version of the entire image and puts it in a new layer right on top. And with this layer, I can apply any final effects or adjustments to the whole thing as a single layer. The first thing I'm gonna do is just give it a quick blur with just a regular filter blur. And that'll smooth out any overly sharp details. And then I'm gonna go to filter, camera raw filter. Now, if you haven't worked much in Lightroom or with raw camera files in Photoshop, there's like a whole hidden winter wonderland here. Even if you use camera raw for your photography, you might not have realized that you can use all these bells and whistles and sliders to make adjustments to not just your photos, but your Photoshop comps as well. And in this camera raw filter, you can play with brightness, shadows, contrast, curves, many of the things you would do with individual adjustment layers, but all in one place. 
And there are actually some other nice effects that are kind of hiding in here. So you may think Photoshop doesn't have a direct tool for adding grain to an image, but it actually does and it's hidden right here. I'm gonna give the image some grain. I'll set that to 30. And then I'm also gonna use the sharpen effect, which is here, and I'll set the amount to 40. Then back in the main tab, I might even give the image a little extra brightness using the highlight slider. And I can toggle the effect on and off here, and it's all subtle detail, but I do like to hide my tracks in Photoshop, and I think the camera raw filter does a good job of just that. It gives the whole thing just a little extra grit and punch. Well, there you have it, the finished look. I hope this technique or some of the pieces along the way will come in handy for you. You can find these wood textures and much, much more at texturelabs.org. Please do hit that like button. It's a single click that goes a long way for us. And leave your comments, questions, or links to your own work in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.